Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Sunday evening episode of Ted's Booze Cellar. Welcome to the premier alcohol review show here on YouTube with me, your most gracious and most definitely not suspicious host. And it is currently quarter past six on the 25th of February 2024. I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not then I hope things improve very soon. So we're going to be taking a look today at a beer that was gifted to me for my birthday by my cousins Jake and Iris. So thank you very much guys, this is very much appreciated. And today we're going to be taking a look at Er Boqueron. I might be mispronouncing that horribly, but this is a Spanish brand of beer. And the really key thing about these guys is this is the world's first and only, as they've said on their website, seawater beer. So it says, Er Bocoeron, again, apologies, is the fusion of two business concepts, seawater and craft beer, which has made it possible to produce a unique product in the world, the first and only beer with seawater in the world. Er Bocoeron is a fresh blonde beer that is easy to drink, no added gas, no filtering, unpasteurized. And it says here, traditional elaboration. Uh, below that it says, our beer is brewed in accordance with the German purity law of 1516, which decreed that beer could only be made from four basic ingredients, water, barley, malt, yeast, and hops. Unlike industrial beers, craft beer undergoes double fermentation. So yeah, no, this sounds like it could be pretty spicy, a pretty tasty customer, I will say that. And it's, got here a 4.8% alcohol volume and it says it's got 0.5% seawater in there along with the water, barley malts, hops and the yeast. And yeah, it says here cerveza non con agua de mar, which literally translates from Spanish to English as beer with seawater. And the beer itself is from Valencia, which is a region of Spain. So yeah, no, that's a pretty simple rundown of this beer in question. And I've got to say, there's not a lot to read up about on the website. I mean, I suppose you could find out more information about these guys from the campaigns that they do. So I've put the links to their website in the video description down below so you guys can check that out because they do seem like an interesting bunch. I really like the design of this bottle, actually. It's very simplistic. It does kind of make me think of seawater and being by the seaside, and it's got that very nice, simple sort of summery lightness to it. So, yeah, I really like the design of the label and the bottle. I'll give it a solid, like, 9 out of 10. It's missing a little bit of extra character, I think, but generally speaking, the colours against the colour of the glass really contrast quite nicely. So, yeah, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It looks fine. It's simple. It just needs a bit more character, really. But, yeah, let's have a quick snifter of it by opening this sucker up. There we are. And then, let's see what our first impressions are like. Not much of a nose to speak of, really. It's, it's a fine beer nose. It's just like a five, five and a half out of ten in the bottle. I mean, it's nothing really to speak of. There's just not much character, to be perfectly honest. So we'll quickly pour it into this glass to give it a snifter in a space where it's obviously more able to breathe. Now, let's give it a proper snifter to see what the nose really smells like. Yeah, it's just a bit more of a sort of prominent version of the nose in the bottle, really. Yeah, it's got a bit of a seawatery after smell, but like quite a nice one in a sense that it's more serene and holistic and it doesn't really overpower the other flavours in there. So yeah, the nose is fine. It's like a 6 out of 10 in the glass. It's fine. It's just, it's not really much character to speak of. But yeah, that slight seawater after smell along with the barley and hop smell in the main through line is quite nice, though, I will admit. But... Anyway, we'll have ourselves a quick palate cleanser of water before we actually taste it. Also, and one of my viewers pointed this out to me, one of my mates, Harry, I, for some reason, in the last episode of Ted Boo Cellar, I said it was 2021. Don't know why. I just had a complete brain fart, and I am absolutely not sure why I said that, to be honest. So, yeah, not really sure why that happened, to be honest. Mm. But yeah, anyway, on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. So to everyone at home, bottoms up, have a good week ahead. And to my cousins, Jake and Iris, again, thank you for the beer. It is very much appreciated. Anyway, let's see what this sucker tastes like and bottoms up. Oh, oh, that's very distinct. It's very unique, actually, yeah. Mm. God, wow. 
Whoa, the raw, unfiltered nature of this really does speak for itself. This is a very vibrant beer. It's fe it's a very full-on experience in terms of the sensation it causes because it's not like any previous unfiltered beer that I've had. I mean, I've had unfiltered Still Artois, which is really nice. And it's got that rough haziness to it, similar to this. There is almost like this sort of crisp, sort of like, I'm not sure how to describe it, this crisp, almost somewhat umami-esque flavour at the end, which is really fascinating. It's kind of offsetting the main through line, which is a very basic, although very nice and refreshing, golden hops kind of beery flavour. It kind of more so manifests itself in the aftertaste more than anything, and then kind of undercuts all of the bitterness or the sort of hops and barley kind of flavours from before really nicely and kind of just prevents them from being too overpowering on the other aspects and flavours of the drink. And then you combine that with a lightly sparkly and mainly sort of watery kind of texture that actually complements the rest of the flavour really nicely. So generally speaking, the texture, while it is very light and watery, actually complements the flavours really well. So You've got this main through line of kind of like gold beer, although more like a hazy unfiltered lager, and then it's kind of offset at the end by this slightly sort of umami almost kind of like flavour that undercuts everything really nicely. I think that might be the seawater aspect to it. So I really like this flavour. I think that it could probably be a bit overpowering and a bit sort of a weird sensation for some other people. So I do understand if people don't like this, but for me personally, for a simplistic but refreshing and slightly thought-provoking beer, I would say, yeah, it's good. I mean, if you're going into it blind for the first time, I could imagine someone rating this lower than maybe a five, because obviously it's got a very distinct flavour, so I'm not under any impression that not all people will like this flavour, but for me personally, I really like it. It's even got a slightly mangoey tint to the aftertaste as well that's really nice. So I'm willing to give this a 9 out of 10. It's a bit of a full-on experience. I do wish the texture was a little bit fizzier, but generally speaking, I think this is actually probably the best unfiltered beer I've ever had. So yeah, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. This is really, really good stuff, and I would definitely recommend it. So yeah, give these guys a shot and see what their business is about and see if you like what they do. Definitely would recommend, yeah. Anyway, if you guys liked this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Booze Cellar, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to check out anything else I do online, I'll leave the links to all that in the video description down below. But until next time, have fun, stay safe for whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, wash your hands, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Booze Cellar. Bye-bye for now.